Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for Westworld Season 4 Episode 8, K Sabra Sabra. This video will be part of a series of videos where I review episodes of Westworld, so I have to start with a spoiler warning for the series season finale, and not series finale, hopefully not, <laughs> for the season finale of Westworld Season 4, K Sabra Sabra. If you have not seen this episode, you will not want to watch this video, otherwise something will be spoiled for you so I am uh, really late <laughs> with this review because I was traveling uh, at the time uh, this episode was released um, and I, I prioritized reviewing the Better Call Saul series finale because that was the series finale uh, and, uh, so I didn't really have time to do this one until I got back from my trip, so I'm, I'm a bit late with that. Um, and I will say in retrospect, I really much enjoyed the Better Call Saul series finale way better in this episode too, so I think it made sense I prioritized it. Because I'll just get to the point, I was kind of disappointed in this ending for the season. I, throughout the season, I talked about how I felt like the season was really dependent on how they resolved things because it was all building up there was all the mysteries uh it was all like dependent on how well so i would say i would give a rating for an episode and be like well this rating is like flimsy it's dependent on how they resolve the next you know episodes at the end of the season and so in that regard did i think this was the best resolution for the season that i think it totally justified and made all of those previous episodes awesome no I, I did not now did i think that this season this episode totally sucked and ruined the season before it well no i i i, I wouldn't go that far but uh it wasn't to me it wasn't the great sort of um finite ending that i was expecting uh i left too many balls up in the air and too many things were unclear um by the uh by the end of the episode so this episode in particular kind of just boiled down to two storylines there was the storyline of uh, Hale trying to stop the man in black from destroying the sublime and then there was the storyline of uh, Frankie trying to get safely out of the city or Caleb trying to get Frankie safely out of the city or C <laughs> as you want to call her um, and they were both kind of really simplistic and they weren't really to me the great exciting send-off of the season uh, that I was looking for. Now, you could also say there was a third storyline, the one with Christina coming to a great, resolu you know, revelations and her resolutions and resolving what her storyline was all about. And that I was really disappointed in, <laughs> if I'm being frank. Uh, if I'm not being Frankie, but if I'm being frank. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so let me start with the, the, the thing with um, Caleb and Frankie because... Now, the ending where they said goodbye to each other, that was really powerful. Like, that was a really strong ending. They did a great job uh, of developing these characters. And it, it was an emotional departure of her having, and when Caleb was like, says to her, you know, straight out, your father died a long time ago. Like, that, that was really, really powerful stuff. But... In retrospect, the whole, like, Frankie's storyline seemed kind of, like, what was the whole point of her going there then? Because the point was to rescue Caleb, but Caleb was already dead, and he has, tells her that. So, it, I get that it's, like, emotional resolution, because she had always been wondering where her father was, and uh, did her father abandon her, and they get this, this, um, sort of, um resolution inner resolution emotional resolution where she realizes that what happened to him and he's able even though it's not really him he's able to say goodbye to her in some form uh so that is very powerful but i mean as far as like bernard's big plan to save the world it had nothing to do with anything especially since we're told by the end of the episode that um 
the humanity is just gonna die off well, like we're told this which i i have a big issue with that how we're just told that like flat out in dialogue oh yeah humanity is just not gonna survive um and so what what was the point of her going there because at the, towards the beginning of the season bernard specifically said they built uh that uh frankie or c was the one who would save the world um and and that's that's not the case. And then they, you know Bernard also said that that Frank that uh, that Maeve was this weapon, and they had all this huge storyline about go digging out Maeve and getting her, uh, and saying that she's going to be this powerful weapon, and she just gets in a fight with Hale and dies immediately. Now I know that the rationalization for this is that well Bernard was just bullshitting he was just lying to get things because he knew exactly what needed to be done to get to the point that needed to be get to and he so he was lying to people saying that humanity could be saved and really couldn't because he wanted to get to the point where the thing that happens at the end with Dolores recreating humanity or whatever um and in order to get there he would have to tell people these things that weren't necessarily true so does that make sense for the story building up absolutely it does that that totally tracks and it totally makes sense is it good interesting storytelling i don't think it is and if you're looking at it from a narrative perspective it is setting up these storylines to being uh like oh get, get ready for this. this is gonna be awesome she's gonna save the world Maeve's gonna be this huge weapon and then nothing happens it's boom, it's a dud <laughs> and to me even though it makes sense for the story that bernard would make up you know push things to where it needs to be it's not interesting storytelling and it's very disappointing to me that um they may may pretty much does nothing they made a big deal about bringing her back to life and she well i guess you could say she saved frankie's life <laughs> and and then in this episode i guess you could say that frankie you know, save the outliers by killing uh, Clementine, who was on a mission to kill the outliers. But um, what med, what what does that matter? If all the outliers going to die anyway? Because Bernard told us in the line of dialogue, so it all seems kind of nihilistic and kind of pointless. Now, um, also, I will say this particular storyline in this episode, the thing that that creates suspense. And the intention in this storyline is that Clementine has decided out of the blue that she wants to kill all the outliers, which, okay, she might as well, I guess, <laughs> because they need tension for this episode. And, um, and so they have this big fight where Stubbs just dies unceremoniously like most of the characters in this episode uh, not that i really liked Stubbs very much i didn't really care much about that character but it's, it, it was a very nihilistic it felt kind of pointless like well what's the point of him he's just gonna get killed by clementine and then they had that big fight scene which it seemed really unnecessary to me it seemed like they, we just need a suspenseful moment where frankie's life is in danger so let's just all of a sudden have clementine decide she wants to kill the outliers and and them get in this big fight so basically that whole storyline boiled up to that ending scene where she said goodbye to caleb that was the only really satisfying really notable part of that storyline and it made the rest of her storyline about how she was going to be the one to save the world and her going on this mission to the city kind of feel really disappointing to me now um then we have the thing with hale which you know hale's able to get brought back to life even though she was shot in the head which would be firmly established uh, if you're shot in the head that kills your pearl and but whatever uh, <laughs> um and i mean i get why she was recreated and not made because she has all those robot minions that mave does not have and so they wouldn't try to recreate mave but i mean if they're going to bring someone back to life H hail is not really my vote uh, um and then hail gets that message from bernard where you know i guess she's a good guy now on our side now all of a sudden because her interests now suddenly align with 
Bernard because she realizes that the whole, whole world is falling apart because it's not just humanity that's dying. All the hosts are killing each other off as well. Um, which I guess it seems to be the case. I'm not really sure how that works, but whatever. <laughs> Go with it. And, and so... And so Hale uh, goes on this mission to stop the man in black and the gun that Bernard stashed with all the, all the YouTube videos pointed out to me, which I didn't notice when I saw it, watched the episode, is there for Hale to pick up to use to kill the man in black, which as soon as that was pointed out to me, I was like, well, of course it is. Like, when, as soon as I saw the episode playing out the way it was, that Hale was going to hunt down the man in black, of course she was going to find the gun, of course she was going to use it to kill him. Now how she knew exactly to follow all of Bernard's directions to the T was a bit iffy for me, but, you know, whatever. Again, like, I didn't, I didn't really have any issues with the storyline. It was more of wasn't that interesting to me it wasn't something to hang the entire season on because i feel like they've done way more interesting things this season uh than this so um she goes and after she uploads dolores to the sublime which i'll get to uh she goes and crushes her own pearl you know after cr definitively crushing man in black's pearl so he's or bot in black as some people like to call him he's definitely dead and then she crushes her own pearl it's funny that scene where she's you know sitting by the river and looking out at this beautiful scenery and commits suicide it reminds me a lot of the scene in prometheus uh where the there's big alien dudes like just die on earth or whatever but um it's not very good to be reminded of Prometheus, I think. But anyway, <laughs> um, so so then we get the other storyline we get is uh, Christina uh, realizing who she was and that her all the people she interacted with were just figments of her imagination, and that she was just uh, controlling the city, but not actually in the city. She was in the simulation. So from her perspective, she was interacting with the people in the city, but really she wasn't actually there. Uh, which does explain what Teddy meant uh, at the end of the last episode when he told her that uh, that the, the place was real, the people were real, but she wasn't. Um, and uh, does I'm, I have no doubt... Like, I'm 100% certain that they had planned the storyline from the beginning because that's how they make the seasons. They make it all at once. Uh, they have it all planned out. So it's definitely, they, this was definitely the plan all along. And that's never in question for me. But does it track? Does it, is it like a good solid story that, that feels like it has a strong res resolution that makes, oh yeah, that's, that's a great revelation. Like that totally makes sense. That, that totally justifies this story. I don't think it does. <laughs> I don't think it is. I don't think it's, the, I think they could have taken, done way more interesting things with the storyline. The fact that, I mean, I think it's a stretch that she created her boss to um be an asshole to her and hound her and try to get her back and and track now you could say that was just a part of her that that wanted to to stay the course and just do what she was programmed to do and that when she overcame that part is when she was able to do really discover her surroundings but but then it was like he he was she was able to control him the way that she would control a human just conveniently i guess i don't know uh, and and the her uh her roommate or her friend or whatever how she was you know saying that um as she was having dreams about insects coming along but like that was a clear call to the audience that she the humanity was taken over by these insects but apparently the, she was just a figment of christina's imagination again i'm not saying it doesn't make sense it doesn't track it does like you could come up with reason why christina just created that to remind herself of humanity so it tracks but it's not satisfying like to me this is not a well put together uh, story is it's too kind of misleading in a way and it doesn't really all the pieces pieces don't fit together well like a sixth sense sort of thing where you look back on it and you're like oh no that makes perfect sense why you know bruce willis wasn't talking to his wife or whatever and all that sort of thing where here it's just they don't fit together that well uh <laughs> like it just 
like you could come up with reasons to be like no this makes perfect sense but then you're having to you know justify why all these things don't really fit together very well and that's basically how i feel about the christina thing now let let me get into this ending that dolores is so the whole point of Bernard's thing was, like, humanity's gonna die, that's definitely gonna happen. But the whole point is for Christina or Dolores to be uploaded to the Sublime so she can recreate um, humanity. Now, I've heard this theory that, you know, Dolores was uploaded into Rehoboam, and so Rehoboam, like, knew, like, had every information, every bit of data on human beings, or, like, every human alive, and that's why I was able to predict their every move and kind of control their every move. And so now Dolores has that information so she can recreate humanity to a T. And so maybe that is the point of Bernard's whole mission and this is why i really feel like if this is if there's not a season five that this would be a very bad season finale like i would not be satisfied like if they ended it after season three even though there was still a question of what is going to happen next that was more of a finite ending that was more of a a closed off ending like they destroyed Rehoboam and um they're gonna go off and fight this war like that that to me that was very clear like at the end of every season like season one even though you wondered what would happen next it was very clear what the ending was like in in season one it was you know the hosts were taking over and fighting back in season two is the host for Dolores is leaving the park and trying to you know, infiltrate the re real life humanity world in season three is they destroyed Rehoboam who's no longer controlling people's lives and they were now humanity was going to be free whereas here you could say that the ending is well humanity's going to die and Dolores is going to recreate humanity but why what does that mean like what, what to me is too unclear on on what exactly dolores's plan is and why is it we're just told as i said point blank by denard bernard that humanity's gonna die off why why are they gonna die off this seems like there's enough outliers to restart humanity i don't know why it's point blank just because we're told rather than shown in a piece of dialogue that they're definitely going to die, which to me doesn't track, doesn't really make sense. Uh, and then um, we're told that Dolores is going to recreate. But why should, what does that mean exactly? Recreate humanity assimilation. Like, how does that save a different world? Like, what does that mean? Like, I'm, I really didn't. <laughs> I'm just way too unclear. To me, this is way too fuzzy of an ending that is not anywhere near as definitive as the ending of the three previous seasons. So I think this would be one, I've, compared to the other season finales, this would be the worst place um, to end the show. And that's kind of why I don't really think this season's that good because, as I said earlier, a lot of the seasons were was set up and building to what they were building for. And I feel like the ending of the season is really dependent on what they do in season five. Because they could justify many of these things like ceremonious, unceremoniously killing off important characters like Maeve and, and Stubbs and all these other characters. Like they could justify that in season five they could um because it seems like the plan is to recreate all those characters in the simulation so all the actors can come back <laughs> it's not like they're all written off the show because they could all be recreated in dolores's simulation but like how does that like what's the point of it what is the end goal of the simulation like how is that gonna save humanity or the host or, or sentient life how, how is that gonna save it like so to me a lot of what happens um this season is so dependent on it needs to be resolved in season five because this is an unsatisfying resolution the way it is right now because it's too unclear and it doesn't really i don't know it doesn't really attract to me so, my rating for Case Ross Ra out of 10 uh, is a 7, very good, and a, the strength of that 7 
is mainly the scene with uh, Frankie saying goodbye to Caleb, which was a very powerful scene, very well earned. These two uh, characters had a really strong emotional journey. Um, that is mainly why this episode gets a, a positive rating, <laughs> um, because that was a that was a very powerful, well earned scene and the uh the hail stuff was interesting too it was in, it was you know kind of suspenseful seeing her go up against men in black and that her interests were finally aligned with bernard's and she was able to save the sublime but it wasn't the satisfying resolution that justified everything that came before the season that i think it needed to be that the season was setting it up to be it wasn't uh the christina thing to me was not very satisfying at all uh they yeah they left it too unclear too many balls up in the air of what exactly the simulation is that dolores is recreating how does that save humanity why is humanity just gonna die off just because bernard said so all that to me is is too unsatisfying too un too dependent on because they said oh it could make sense if they do season five it's too dependent on the season that comes next to it where i feel like other season finales were not that they stood on their own anyway <clears throat> so <laughs> that is it for my review for the Westworld uh, season finale as i said i'll do a overall review on season four uh next week and so you can keep an eye out on that. Also, uh, check out my channel as I do many more reviews on other shows like um, All Things Star Trek uh, and uh, The Expanse and much more. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.